and welcome to a car file special highlighting MPVs. Now you may have actually thought about buying an MPV, it's ideal maybe if you're starting a family or say if there's two families who want to go on holiday together, you want to travel together but you don't want the hassle of taking two separate cars, a large MPV is ideal. But what about the rest of the time, commuting to work, you don't want a big MPV. People movers such as the Galaxy, Espace or Voyager can cost up to £300 to hire just for a long weekend. So if you do this sort of group family outing a lot, why not think about buying? The problem there is that maybe you don't want to be lumbered with such a huge beast when it's just you commuting to work. This is why mini MPVs such as the Renault Scenic were developed. But they aren't people movers, the Scenic is only a five-seater. But there is a vehicle which is more compact than the average MPV but will still seat seven. And this is it, the Mitsubishi Space Wagon. Sure, it's been around a long time, in fact, since 1991 in its current version, but it's a car that's really been forgotten in the world of MPVs. The likes of the Galaxy, the Espace, the Previa, all a lot bigger, but this car is worth considering, particularly on the price, and also the fact that it's not as large as the other ones and unwieldy and difficult to drive, but it still has the ability to carry seven people. Now one obvious disadvantage of this car because of its size is the fact that in the back it doesn't have the sort of load carrying capacity of other MPVs but there is plenty of space although the rear seats are probably for small kids only. The styling is nothing special, yet for a car designed over 10 years ago, it doesn't look obviously dated. The switchgear is typical Japanese styling, functional with no flair. And the space wagon is made in Japan, so the indicators and wipers are annoyingly on different sides from the standard European spec. Turn right and you'll switch on the windscreen wipers. Now, out on the road, the Mitsubishi Space Wagon behaves like a normal car with minimal body roll and easy-to-drive characteristics. It has a peppy 2.0-litre 16-valve engine, which is perfect for tootling around town. However, it lacks a bit of oomph on the motorway. And one other annoying thing is the dreadful turning circle on the car. The Space Wagon could be a sensible choice for you if you don't mind about the latest MPV fashion. The back seats only give room for children or very small adults. But if that's the load you'll be carrying, you'll discover not only list prices of this model lower than other MPVs in the class, starting at only £16,700, but there are now special editions on offer, such as the Ovation that give even better value for money. Bristling with equipment, electric everything, air conditioning and gear that even the Galaxy can't offer, such as rear electric windows and headlight washers. The Mitsubishi Space Wagon has to be looked at very seriously indeed. Now the Space Wagon is ideal perhaps for the ubiquitous school run, if Mr John Tujag Prescott will allow you to do that of course in the future, or perhaps to going away for a weekend break. However, if you're travelling fully laden with seven people, this is all the space you get in the back for the luggage. Maybe enough for a pair of shorts and a t-shirt each to enjoy the great British summer, if we ever get one of course. This is the Renault Espace, the top seller in its class and the vehicle which first defined the people mover in Britain, so now it's getting just a little long in the tooth. So, the latest bandwagon. To join the bandwagon, well, here's a couple of clues. It's one of the most prestigious of marks, and certainly the oldest. Daimler-Benz started making cars a century ago, and they became Mercedes-Benz, famous for their high-quality, luxurious, speedy, and very expensive cars. Now they've turned to making MPVs, so this is a Merc as well. Surprised? I know a man who was. So what would you guess this was? Um, well, looking at it, I would say a Ford. Maybe like a Plymouth Voyager? Probably a Nissan. Ford. What would you say, first glance? Ford. Mercedes. OK, so it caught a few people out. But is that badge any guarantee that the V-Class is up to the job? Will it become the luxury limo of people carriers? Under the bonnet is a petrol-injected 2.3-litre engine, which isn't big for a vehicle this size, but the brake servo is massive, which hints at its origins as a load-toting van. The sides are very high, which is accentuated by the total lack of curves. Now, that's almost political incorrectness in today's curvy car market. Round at the back, this sill is nice and low to the ground, which is great for loading and unloading. 
Makes a good spot for a tailgate picnic too. And speaking of which, good head clearance. The interior space is really flexible because all the seats are removable. However, the snag is that each of them weighs 40 kilos, which is about 100 weight in old money, so I'm not even going to try and demonstrate taking them right out. Even doing this, I feel I need a bit of a rest afterwards. Let someone else drive for a change. Flip out one or both tables and it becomes a playroom or an office. Mercedes equates these plush individual seats to business class on a 747. And with a base price of nearly £22,000, business class families are obviously the target market. Large ones too. You can opt for a seventh seat here, but unfortunately they all have to be heaved out and put back in to turn them round. They don't swivel. Still, it is the first MPV to offer a rear-facing ride, which means that I Spy is no longer your only relief from backseat bickering. And with the fashion trim level, you even get a choice of in-car games, as well as fatter tyres, colour-coordinated trim, back-of-seat coat hangers, and even a brolly with its own bracket. The base model's called the Trend, and this is the top-of-the-range Ambiente, which means alloy wheels, leather interior, an under-seat safe, and a drinks cooler which I haven't been able to locate. I can only assume it isn't included on models they're going to lend to journalists. Can't imagine why. So, what's it like up front? Well, it's comfy and it's high up, which I like, though this semi-horizontal wheel gives rather a bus-like feeling. This is Mercedes' first front-wheel drive. It's agile, with a nice self-levelling suspension, but it is a bit underpowered. And I'm not looking for a hefty 0-60, but I think Mercedes should bring out their 2.8-litre V6 as soon as possible. So it's got some good plus points, but some worrying negatives as well. And in a competitive market, everything does need to be right, especially now the Americans are coming onto the scene with their world-beating Chrysler minivan. Van, now there's a word the PR men hate us to use. But if we're to buy the V-Class for all the qualities associated with the badge, the Mercedes has to banish all thoughts that this is just a van in tarty trousers. Unconvinced? Well, if you're still solvent once the family's fled, you can always slide back into what may remain most people's idea of what Mercedes really means. As for the V-Class, only time and the order books will tell. This is the Griffith Observatory in the hills over Hollywood. And when you come to an observatory, you want to look at the stars. Well, when Chrysler looked at their stars about 10 or 12 years ago, they were almost out of business. So they brought a new executive over to run the company from Ford. His name was Lee Iacocca. He had an idea for a vehicle called a minivan. Now in Europe, these are called MPVs, like the Renault Espace, the Toyota Previa. But this is the big one in America. Nobody's ever been accused of falling in love with a minivan. They're not very sexy, they're fairly boring, but they do their job well. The Chrysler does it as well as just about any vehicle in the world. I can't imagine anyone 20 or 30 or 50 years from now collecting these and restoring them to show at the Concorde. It's a good thing this Chrysler minivan has analog brakes because I did not want to end up in downtown Los Angeles. Now, why is this minivan so popular? They sell half a million of them a year in America. One of the main reasons is not just this sliding door. A lot of minivans have sliding doors, but follow me. Let me show you something very special about this Chrysler. You come through the back and there is Voila! Another sliding door on the other side. It makes it so easy to get in and out of the vehicle, load the kids, load the groceries. If you need extra room in the back, all the seats in the back are easily removed. They're a little bit heavier than I would like, and they go in a little bit more difficultly than they come out, but they're easy to get out. Now take a look at the dashboard. There's a couple of extra special gadgets up here we want to show you. First right here, there's a power outlet for your cell phone or your laptop computer. 
We used to call it a cigarette lighter, but those are politically incorrect these days in the United States. You have separate controls for the heat and the air conditioner for the driver's side and the passenger side. This feature has saved several marriages that I know of. And finally, the radio. It has a control for quadraphonic sound. If you remember quadraphonic from the 70s, well, that never took off. But Chrysler bought about 5 million of these radios. Literally, it's in all their cars and trucks. Now, like any vehicle, even the Chrysler minivan is not perfect. It's, it's had its problems, let's be honest about that. When it came out in America about a year ago, there were some problems with the analog brake system and with the door latches, but those problems have been fixed and they should not be a problem at all on the British model. Now, the price of a minivan, a Chrysler minivan, is anywhere from about eighteen dollars to $32,000 or about twelve to 20,000 pounds. <laughs> Whether you're in Beverly Hills or even in Wilmslow, you won't get a lot of high speed performance from the Chrysler minivan, but you'll get great fuel mileage performance. In fact, 25 miles per gallon, which is very impressive for a vehicle of this size and weight. You've got airbags right here for the driver, and there's one on the passenger side as well. The analog brakes, all-wheel drive is available. And as far as security goes, you sit way up high. You get a great view of the road around you. And comfort and luxury, well, this is as comfortable as any limousine I've ever been in. And a lot of these attributes sound like they may be very attractive to women, to the females in the audience, and there's a reason for that. Women in America are responsible for making 80% of the car purchase decisions. I think it's the same way in England, but you just haven't admitted it as yet. After the break, the Galaxy, the Sintra and the Picnic on our MPV special. So you have 20 to 25,000 pounds to spend on a new vehicle and you fancy the idea of a multi-purpose vehicle. You've taken a good look around and see what's available on the market. Your wife likes the idea of one, the kids like the idea of one, but how practical are these cars in terms of general life? Well, we've got two with us today, the world acclaimed Ford Galaxy and the all new Vauxhall Sintra. And we're going to take a close look and drive them and see what they're really like. First of all, let's take a close look at the Galaxy. So first impressions once you get inside the Ford Galaxy uh, are fairly good. The seats feel okay, but we believe that on a long journey they're, they're not tremendously comfortable. You get these nice armrests, which I'm particularly fond of, and the, the finish is okay. The main worry about the Galaxy, though, is the expanse of plastic. It's just a huge area of plastic, and you can't see the bonnet, and the front of the car seems a long way away and that can be very difficult if you're trying to park in, in a tight parking situation. Uh, you also get rather dinky little cup holders, although how long those cup holders will actually last when the kids get, get about them is, is another matter. You get air conditioning as well. Now one thing about the Galaxy is that you can get a very good driving position due to the adjustable steering wheel which comes forward 
and up and down so you can find that perfect position and that's one feature that some of the MPVs don't have on the Sintra we've got here today doesn't have an adjustable steering wheel neither does the Mercedes V-Class now one of the things that concerns us on men and motors are the controls on the Ford Galaxy they're rather tacky they're very short and stubby and when you're actually driving we've had difficulty in finding the right controls we then ended up changing the CD when we wanted to flash headlights and vice versa silly little things like that uh, this one's cru cruise control and also the indicators this one is the radio down down here and you get the windscreen wipers on the right hand side but they're they're just that little bit small if you've only got short fingers and you're in a driving position they're not terribly easy to use one of the other main gripes we've found about the Galaxy when you're out driving on the motorways particularly is the visibility through the back uh, in the driving seat you're looking through your rear view mirror and all you can see practically is headrest you get the three in the middle the two at the back and very little visibility through the back seat, particularly if, you, if there are other cars low down at normal level cars uh, coming up behind you, you're probably going to have a lot of difficulty in seeing those. So that is a real problem in the Galaxy. The headrests get in the way an awful lot. This particular Galaxy model is the 2.3, which is a brand new engine, and this is the Gear X specification. Now in the back there are three seats for the passengers. We've got two in the back here as well. And there's a reasonable amount of leg room. Uh, passengers get these nice little airline style picnic trays as well to put their drinks on as well. Uh, but not a lot of areas to put storage. Uh, bins are sadly lacking. Things like the Scenic have nice bins under the seats and under the floor as well. I mean, this is a high floored car, but there seems to be a real lack of all round storage areas in this Galaxy. Now the Ford Galaxy is one of the nicer styled MPVs around. Uh, you get a nice roof spoiler, nice little bit of chrome as well from Ford. And in the back, with the two seats that we have fitted here, luggage space is not huge. We've got all, all our junk in here. Uh, storage bins in the rear, well, we've got a CD changer fitted to this model, and that's in there. But over the other side, where you thought there might be a little area for storage, there is nothing, which is rather a mystery. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of suitcases in the back of this when you have all the seats fitted. So that's a downside on these particular MPVs. Now, although we've been critical of one or two aspects of the Ford Galaxy, we are very impressed overall by the car. And of course, the criticisms that we made of it do apply to the Seat Alhambra and the Volkswagen Charan. But the one area where the Ford scores over the Seat and the Volkswagen is under the bonnet because this has the new 2.3 litre power plant and it's a cracker. So out on the road is one area where the Ford Galaxy really scores over probably most of the other MPVs. The handling and ride is tremendously good. It corners remarkably well for what is essentially a very big car. Ford have sold over 16,000 Galaxies since its introduction back in 1995 and that's made it Britain's best-selling MPV, setting new standards in design, ride and handling. And this new 2.3 litre engine delivers a really exciting driving experience thanks to its class leading torque which is delivered consistently across a wide range. The 2.3 litre engine produces 145 brake horsepower and comes with either a 5 speed manual or adaptive 4 speed automatic gearbox and it's available in three different models, the GLX, the highly specified gear and the Gear X models. So this is Vauxhall's rather late entry into the MPV market, the all-new Sintra, with that distinctive V on the front of its grille, so you can immediately tell it is a Vauxhall. It has a rather bland style to it. I've lived with this vehicle for the past week or so now, and my impressions are fairly OK. There's certainly some gripes about the driving position, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But it comes with a choice of two engines. You get a 2.2-litre five-speed manual, which is this car, or you can go for the top of the range CDX which comes with a 3 litre V6. The car is actually built in America, in Doraville, in Georgia, and it's been designed by the Americans but they were given the brief to make sure it had certain European styles to it and I think probably GM have come up with that and in America you can get this uh, badged as a Pontiac or as an Oldsmobile. So let's take a look at the driving position which is one of my main problems with this car. Now this is one of the main areas that I've had a problem with, the driving position of the Sintra. Now you can change the seat into, well, pretty much any different way, up and down, forwards and backwards, and plenty of rake and adjustment there. But the problem I had particularly is with the pedals and the accelerator pedal in 
mainly. Uh, I found it very difficult to get a comfortable driving position uh, with the foot there and after a long journey back from Luton last week uh, my uh, ankle and my knee were aching rather badly after that long drive so I have had a problem trying to get a comfortable driving position but inside it's fairly comfortable again you get these nice armrests uh, everything is nicely laid out there's a good stereo in it and you can see the readout of the stereo there there's a temperature and a time on that kind of central control panel now standard equipment on the Sintra is very high as you would expect. This is the CD model, the 2.2 litre engine. You get ABS brakes as standard, you get air conditioning, you get a quality stereo system. Uh, some other rather odd little areas like this thing here, don't quite know what it's for. Maybe it's for sunglasses, little extra storage bin up there. Uh, there's a good sized glove box as well. And of course the usual cup holders for the old bottled water and cans of drink and an extra power cord as well for plugging your mobile phone or any other accessory you might want to put into there. One of the nice aspects on the Sintra is sliding doors, which you get both sides on this car, which you don't get, of course, on the Galaxy. You get sliding doors as well on some of the other MPVs, the Citroen, the Fiat, and the Peugeot have them as standard. In the back, legroom is not tremendously good for passengers. It's okay for the kids, but taking adults, there's not a huge amount of support and no support for the uh, thighs there either. Uh, these seats are right the way back. As I mentioned before, you don't get any cup holders. There are no picnic trays in the back either but the seats are fairly comfortable all in all and I'm sure the kids will be very happy in the back of one of these. But hang on a minute, there are even more seats in the back and let's take a look at those. Getting into the rear of the Sintra is fairly easy. There's a nice little clip there which is easy to use and climbing in and out of the rear is quite comfortable really. This model is fitted with the extra two seats. You can have a row of seats which would perhaps take passengers up to a total of eight in, the, in this particular model. You also get the cup holders there are other little cubby holes, lights in the back as well. Not a lot of room in the rear, but uh, okay for the kids. And that's the main point of these MPVs. You know, you're not going to carry about eight fully grown adults in the back of these things. Uh, the kids will be fine in the back and they do love it in the back of these MPVs. Now, General Motors engineers were told to come up with an MPV that really drives like a car. And I have to say, it does drive like a car when you're out on the road. If it wasn't for the uncomfortable driving position that I've found, it would be a very nice car to drive. There's plenty of power there, particularly from the 2.2 litre, uh, 139 brake horsepower car. This is the CD. Or, of course, you can go for the 3 litre V6 with 198 brake horsepower. And the size of the Sintra is particularly good. It's five inches shorter th than an Omega Saloon. Well, we've had time to assess these MPVs from Ford and from Vauxhall, and what are our final impressions? Well, we like the Sintra. It's a very solid car. Inside, there's plenty of space to take all the family and the luggage. Uh, the driving position is not tremendously good. We're not keen on that. But for style, that probably goes to the Galaxy. And particularly, if you're going to get a Galaxy, make sure you get this new 2.3-litre engine, because that's an absolute cracker. But make sure, if you are going to buy a multi-purpose vehicle, to take your time and decide carefully that you buy the right one. There are lots of MPVs on the market from all the main manufacturers now. And if you want to buy an MPV, why not go into the showroom of the one you really fancy and say, give me one to drive for the weekend so I can test it out and see what it's really like with the kids and luggage, go away for the weekend in it and see how it feels. Mm -hmm.